So um, what are your thoughts about the upcoming movie, Captain Phillips? I'm very excited about the movie. Uh, I think uh, it will show uh, a human story uh, from many different aspects. Captain Phillips' uh, challenges uh, throughout the time, the crew of the, uh, the Maersk, Alabama, uh, and then also the, uh, the teamwork and uh, interoperability of our joint forces, uh, especially uh, my crew on board Bainbridge, along with the, uh, the Halle Burton and the, and the Boxer and Naval Special Warfare. So can you take us through like kind of a timeline of uh, what happened from your perspective? Sure, from, from my perspective, um, this is, you know, the thing about this story, uh, this human story, is that there's many aspects of it and many views of the story. Uh, my story that I tell is my sea story from the perspective of the commanding officer of Bainbridge. There's multiple other stories that are out there, multiple other views of what happened. Um, so it's very interesting to be able to bring it all together, and I think that's what we're going to see with this movie, um, the different perspectives. Uh, for me, basically, we were uh, a few weeks into our deployment to the Fifth Fleet Area of Operation conducting maritime security operations and struggle against violent extremism uh, in the uh, Somali Basin and the, uh, the Gulf of Aden. Um, we were patrolling off the coast of uh, Somalia uh, on Tuesday, the 7th of April. Uh, I was actually conducting uh, a maintenance spot check with one of my ET3s uh, when my tactical action officer called me up to notify me that uh, he had received a call from Fifth Fleet that a U.S. Uh, merchant vessel, the Maersk, Alabama, had been pirated. Uh, it was approximately 300 miles uh, away from us uh, and that we were ordered to make best speed available in order to uh, intercept the Maersk, Alabama. Uh, so I, I ended the spot check, uh, told uh, ET3 that I'd get back with him uh, a little bit later, and then went down, uh, down into combat. And that's when my team uh, started gathering uh, intelligence and getting up the communications and everything else as we made our way at 30 knots uh, towards the last known position of the, uh, the Alabama. Uh, we were able to get on station uh, really early in the morning on the, uh, on the 8th of April. Uh, along our journey there, though, we had learned that the, uh, the crew of the Alabama had heroically taken their ship back from the Somali, four Somali pirates that had, uh, had hijacked it and pirated it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in the process, uh, Captain Richard Phillips, their, their master, uh, had been taken hostage by the, uh, by the pirates. However, they did have the pirate leader on board, uh, but then uh, the exchange went wrong and now there were four pirates with Captain Phillips in the covered lifeboat off the, uh, off the stern. So as we proceeded to station, we, uh, we were coordinating and communicating uh, with higher headquarters, uh, along with actually talking to uh, Maersk headquarters back in Norfolk to get some uh, situational awareness uh, from their perspective. And uh, I actually was able to call the first mate and uh, talk to him on the, uh, on the Alabama to find out what the situation was along with talking to the chief engineer. Uh, so it was very, very interesting. We had a little perspective of going in there on, uh, on what situation we were, uh, we were getting into. Um, so it was incredible. And from the internal perspective of my crew, uh, just the focus, determination, um, and, and forthrightness of my crew was incredible. Um, I, just many examples. Uh, one of my officers, uh, Lieutenant J.G. Jonathan Hughes, spent 16 hours on the bridge uh, driving Bainbridge and, and block, conducting blocking and tackling of the lifeboat to keep it from coming, making any, any closer uh, to a shore. Uh, my, my sailors out on the uh, small caliber action team who are out there in the 100, 110 degree sun uh, with their, their full battle rattle on, monitoring what was going on in the lifeboat and providing that, that info back. My CSs, my culinary specialists who were, were ensuring that my crew, who I, I had to order some of them to actually leave station and, and get some rest so they could be fresh again for the, for the next day. Uh, my culinary specialist going out feeding those guys. My my deck 
division, my first uh, first lieutenant and uh, her chief and her deck seamen uh, and petty officers um, sleeping on the midship's quarter deck so that they could, in a, in a moment's notice, be able to launch boats and to do uh, support to the special operations forces. Uh, it was a total team effort. Uh, I, I'm very proud of my crew to this day. So overall, would you say the demeanor of the whole crew throughout the entire operation was, let's go get them? Yes, very, very focused, very patient, very determined. Um, and it, it was a total team effort. I mean, from, the, from the, the lowest ranking person all the way up to the commanding officer. Um, it, very focused. Uh, I had a very uh, cohesive crew uh, that, was, uh, that was focused on the mission. Um, and like I said, I'm very, I'm very proud of them. Can you, uh, can you actually tell us about the, how did you feel in the moment when uh, you woke up and the Bainbridge is all over the news with Captain Phillips? Like, well, how did that feel? It, it was pretty surreal. Um, we, actually, uh, we actually cut back our communications off ship in terms of uh, internet connectivity and everything else, and we had a small, limited, uh, limited number uh, of folks who could access that. But, uh, and I had no time to go to CNN or Fox or any of those websites to see what was going on. Um, it was, you know, it was kind of only after the situation uh, was resolved that we realized the the media, the worldwide media attention that had been paid uh, to us and and everything that was going on. It was it was pretty uh, uh, it was pretty overwhelming, um, and and then just the feeling uh, of uh, you you cannot ever prepare for a situation like that. You can train, you can conduct scenarios, um, you can what if, uh, but in that moment, um, you're, uh, you're going with it. So uh, what do you want future sailors to know about this specific operation, um, you know, since it's actually a, now becoming a very important part of, you know, like you said, our, how our, um, I guess our Navy is viewed one of the things that I, I stressed to my officers, my chief petty officers and my sailors, uh, and to any, any future uh, officers, chief petty officers and sailors, is you don't know when uh, your number is gonna be called to step out and conduct a mission. Uh, we hadn't specifically trained for a hostage rescue at sea. It's not something that you typically do but you train for other missions on, on deployment. And that training and that readiness and being forward, uh, ready to accomplish whatever mission is assigned to you, um, you have to take day to day, uh, whatever you do, whether that's cooking, cleaning, repairing your gear, uh, leadership, et cetera, et cetera, that all builds uh, a networked team that is ready to respond on a moment's notice when it's just like being, being on, a, on a sports team. You don't know when you're going to the Super Bowl or the World Series, um, but when you get there, you better be ready because uh, the margins are very tight. Okay, so what's it like having uh, your real life experience, this whole, you know, this whole thing happen? What, what's it like having Hollywood and a bunch of actors and people who maybe don't know as much? about the situation, but are learning about it and are portraying you and several of the other people who are involved in this. How does it feel? It, it's, it's actually pretty, uh, pretty neat, uh, kind of interesting and everything else. I mean, the, uh, the Department of Defense and uh, Department of the Navy uh, has, uh, has been working well with Hollywood, and there's a traditional relationship that goes back years and years and years um, from you know, World War II. Uh, where we portrayed uh, our gallant heroes from World War II all the way up to, uh, to present day. Um, and, and the interesting thing is I, I was interviewed for the, uh, for the film to provide some context. Uh, additionally, I had the opportunity to speak to the actor who is uh, portraying me during the film. Uh, and then during the two weeks of uh, filming down in the Norfolk waterfront, I had a few opportunities to go down and actually view some of the filming on board the USS Truxton, uh, which plays the Bainbridge in the movie. Uh, and I can tell you the Truxton sailors, uh, they did an awesome job. Uh, I talked to the, uh, the CO, uh, Captain uh, John Ferguson, 
uh, and said if there was any other ship that uh, I could have other than Bainbridge, uh, Truxton, uh, Truxton was it. They were very professional uh, and they, they, they really did a great job uh, with the movie and I think we're gonna see that. And it, and it just shows you the quality uh, and the talents of our sailors uh, throughout the Navy. Um, and the other interesting observation was just talking to the, the actors, the director, the producer, um, and just the film crew, the, the crew members, the hairdressers, et cetera. Um, it, was, it was both the crew of the Truxton and the film crew in general, include the actors, learned a lot from each other. And uh, I think uh, when all was said and done, um, there, were a lot of, there were a lot of smiles and teamwork that occurred. And I think we got a, a, a greater understanding of what the Hollywood industry does. And I think they got a greater understanding of what the Navy, the Navy does. It was uh, uh, very much positive for both sides. And is there anything that you just want to add, maybe a message that you have for, um, you know, just maybe the actors that, you know, were in this movie, the people that produced this, maybe the people that maybe aren't in the Navy anymore that were a part of this, and maybe some of the people that are still involved? I, I think the biggest thing, some of the biggest takeaways uh, about the whole situation in general uh, is, and, and it, go, it goes to the CNO's uh, sailing directions of war fighting first, uh, operate forward and be ready. I think all three of those were seen in this this incident. Um, I I shudder to think uh, if we project years from now um, what could happen in the world if uh, our Navy ships aren't out there on station being ready to keep the uh, the freedom of the seas. Um, that is the that is one of the biggest takeaways. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I, I've talked to Captain Richard Phillips since the incident. Typically, he'll, he and his wife uh, contact me around Easter every year, which, uh, you know, that, that's pretty, uh, pretty special to all of us. Um, but he just got back from being out at sea again. He took about a year off after the incident, um, but he's been at sea the last three years. So what motivates him a person, a mariner, that was attacked by, attacked by pirates, was held hostage uh, for, for upwards of five days, uh, and then he steps out again on U.S. flag merchant ships and goes and continues to do that. And I think that tells you that he knows that if something happens, the United States Navy will be there again. You're welcome. Excellent. Oh, you do? Oh, oh okay. sure. Sorry. Go ahead. Just one, uh, well, one first of all, I'm Sorry about that. No, no, that's okay. No worries. Uh, well, I'm, just, I'm doing a timeline for it. Sure. I'm kind of missing a little chunk of it. I'm confused. When you um, got the call, you, you went to the, the Alabama first, correct? Correct. How long between from uh, meeting up with the Alabama until you got to the lifeboat? Yeah, you can just answer, actually, while facing me. Sure. So, uh, just okay. So, are you? So we got the call. I mean, you got the call, and you, you showed up to the Alabama. Right. Like the seventh, eighth uh, of April. How long after meeting up with the Alabama until you got to the? Uh, oh, sure. To the lifeboat. We got the call uh, to head towards the Alabama about uh, zero nine hundred ten hundred uh, on Tuesday, uh, the morning of September. Excuse me, uh, April seventh. Our transit, uh, we arrived on station about 0100 on the morning of the 8th, uh, and the lifeboat was just astern of the Alabama about off its port quarter. Okay, does, that, does that help? Yeah, so basically when you got to the Alabama, it was, they were just... Yeah, the, what, what had happened was, is once they put the, uh, once they put the, so the lifeboat got in the water, uh, and then the, the deal that the pirates were actually talking to Alabama about was that they wanted in the morning to reboard Alabama. Uh, so that way, and they would give back Captain Phillips that morning. But it was just another opportunity for them to 
retake the vessel. Because uh, additionally, there were, uh, there were other pirate motherships in the area that they were communicating with to have that pirate flotilla close on Alabama uh, so that they could actually bring more forces to bear to recapture Alabama. So that was part that, of our mission. That was what I was confused about because I wasn't sure how long you were actually in contact with the lifeboat. If it was all five of those days, and that's different. Yeah, it was. It was pre one, once we got on station, the uh, the lifeboat was there, and Alabama and the lifeboat had had stayed pretty much in the same area uh, throughout the night. And then once we showed up on scene, we we remained in the area throughout the morning of the uh, the eighth, and then I put a a boarding team on board Alabama to bring her safely to uh, to Mombasa. I just have, I have one other just question. Sure. You, you kind of touched on it a little bit um, about how you don't necessarily train for this specific type of thing, but maybe just touch on a little bit how it kind of felt to actually have um, something other than a training mission to, you know, to, to like it was an actual real life situation. And what, what kind of went through your head right off the bat when you were you excited? Did you feel the, the crew was, was um, like they were pumped up for this type of thing? If, if that makes sense. Yes, I understand. Okay. Uh, you you part of our uh, part of our Navy culture is we train, we train, we train, and then we go out and operate forward. Um, my crew had gone through an extensive uh, extensive training phase prior to uh, to our deployment and I had a focused team of professionals who were ready to respond uh, to any task that was thrown their way, and they performed superbly. Um, I, just my, my personnel remained focused. Uh, they did their job, they did it well, and they also provided different perspectives, thinking outside the box on how we can tackle this situation that was unlike any that has occurred uh, in the modern Navy. The last time a U.S. merchant vessel had been pirated was 200 years ago. Um, the, the Navy, we're coming up on our 238th birthday, but the reason for it being around was thanks to Thomas Jefferson and the Barbary Pirates. 